All chrome, single hook, and he was dropping it. Treble hook and dropping it. Wow. Are you Steve? You guys have uh, the Tadio 40 chrome? Oh, he so he wasn't able to get the same exact one. Yeah, but just the so old fashioned. I hooked one yesterday on that. And on a slow on a slow drop too, or were you? I dropped it 400 feet down and then two cranks in and just burnt. Dang, that's the one right there, huh? Yeah. yeah. There, you go. <laughs> there it is. With the with the glow back, back too. Yeah. You got one more of those? Yeah. yeah. So you got you and then you got yours rigged up? I did. I, yeah, I, I put, put a, a two hundred pound leader on it and an extra. I put a, can you can you rig this one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll do that same yeah, that I'll same rig, yeah. <laughs> you have you have a leader on it too? Did you no, no, You just tied it to eighty pound mont? <laughs> Figure might as well put. I mean, it's not gonna hurt to have another hook on it, right? Yeah, we'll do another hook. That one has a better hook, though. That one has a single. I, I've lost one on a treble. Really? A yeah, big, a big, big one? one? Yeah, it, it just turns towards the boat, and as soon as it opens the mouth, the, the hook comes right off. What? Uh, what's the biggest one that you've gotten? I haven't gotten any. Oh, right. was I, that? I, I oh yeah, you said one. that. Yeah. Uh, I went out the other day. And no, no, it's not even much. Dirty jiggler. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one right there. <laughs> the, 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 dirt, that just, <laughs> the dirty jiggler. That's just nasty right there. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Yeah, I know. That's sick. That one. It came apart in two pieces. It was an owner Mutu circle hook that I used okay. for the last 30 years. And it broke it in half, yeah. the hook? Yeah. But you still got the fish. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> you're awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you're, you're an inspiration. Yeah, you're hardcore uh, sport fishing. <laughs> I like it. Making it. It's time on the rail, right? That's the secret is going and time on the rail, right? Here we are at Fisherman's Landing. Down here in uh, Point Loma, about to get on the Mustang for an overnight trip. We're coming back with big bluefin tuna. So I'm trying to make it happen here. Let's go. And then 80 pound braid on that one? Yeah. That's the hollow? That's the yeah, hollow? Did they put a loop? They can put that loop on the end of it if you want or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna stick to my one. I got 80 pound braid with 80 pound mono uh, top shot on this one. I don't, you know, I'm I'm getting new into the bluefin stuff, and that that's what the guys were saying. Cause uh, he was like, yeah, uh, I hooked up on 40 pound, but don't, uh, you know, don't you can't don't do that, cause they don't want you fishing light line to be on the fish forever. You yeah, need to be able to turn the fish's head and yeah. and crank on it, right? Yeah, cause I mean, I could bring him in on the Thanks. This is our first weekend out for the season. We went out with a bang first day. We 
14 fish, 12 over a buck 30. There we go. Good. Up there. <laughs> and did everybody listen to what I was saying and it made a huge difference? Yes, it would. Okay, well, well today, they didn't. <laughs> today, they wanted to do it exactly how they showed up, ready to go. I'm going to say some stuff that might sound crazy to some people, but you only got one rod you should be fishing bluefin tomorrow with. Out of all the stuff you brought, leave it in the rack, take your best rod, your best reel, put them together, and that's what you're going to use. Even if it's a Makaira 30, two speed, huge, heavy broomstick, that's perfect. Even for 40 pound tests. Tackle and line do not go hand in hand. You could use an international 50 wide and a 200 pound setup rod with 40 pound line. You tie the braid to the line just like you would to the heavy stuff. You will not catch these fish on a 40 pound setup, a 50 pound setup. You need a 130 pound setup tapered down to 50 pound line for the sinker rig, 60 pound line. I will give you a top shot of 50 or 60 pound test just so you strip off your heavy stuff in the morning. If you're dropping down 100, 130 pound monofilament sinker rigs, you're not going to get bites. It's just how it is. I wish we could. Best thing you could do, take your heaviest setup, strip the top shot, tie your SK jig or flat fall, go in the dark, straight to the braid, I mean with your three foot leader or whatever, you know, 200, 300 pound leader. The second the sun comes up, cut it off, let us tie on three brand new on a filament, top shot, 60 pound, right to your braid. You then put on your three foot fluorocarbon, two watt circle hook, and a rubber band weight right above your fluoro knot. You now have the best setup you could fight these fish with. You want to have a rod and a reel that is capable of catching a 200 plus pound fish. If you have a rod that you use in August for 30 pound yellowfin, and you're going to try to use that same rod for 200 pound bluefin, you are severely undergunned. Saturday, we did 14 out of 19. Hooked 19 fish, got 14 of them. Great ratio. Almost everybody took my advice. One rod is all you need. It doesn't matter if you have six with you. Five of them can stay in the rack all day long. It's flat falls, it's SK jigs in the dark, and it's sinker rigs in the day. 60 pound mono, 60 pound fluoro. Oh, I want to drop down. Cut off three feet of fluoro, 50 pound fluoro. You now have a 50 or 60 pound rig, which is tying one knot. We would love to do it. We lost 15 fish today. The reason we got in late, we saw 25, 30 schools that would not cooperate. We were stopping all day long, all day. But nobody moved their feet. Nobody wanted to use that device and actually go into a gunfight with a gun, not a knife. They were hooking them on 30 pound outfits, noodle rods, single speed 25 year old TLDs. Like that stuff shouldn't be on a 200 pound, you know, 200 pound fit. You need the capacity of a big reel with the line size that they're allowing. This is unheard of for a fleet to go out and catch 152, 250 pound fish on an overnight in May. 50 miles from home, so we're fishing till 12 or 1. I mean, it's nice that we have an opportunity in the dark. If this boat slows down and you wake up, give it a minute. I'll be driving for a couple hours. Nate's very, very good. We stopped the boat, had five, three fish on the boat, three out of five on the boat before I woke up. It was a beautiful thing. Great way to wake up. So if the boat slows, open your eyes. Oh, I'm getting excited. Wait till the boat stops before you come out of your bunk. Because he's going to be chasing sonar fish. Well, sometimes then on a boat where fish sonar, you don't always get on top of that school. Sometimes they just 
they're gone or they sound down. So he'll work around, once he sees it, he'll get a little bit of swell of it and shut down. If the boat shuts down, that's when you come up, the rod should be ready to go, drags already set, knots are tied, everything's ready to go. You grab that one rod we're talking about. Drop it, we'll tell you what depth. Fish it hard. This fish does not just jump on every every jig or every bait. If your bait does not look attractive, even on a sinker rig, you're not going to get the bites. These fish don't get this big by accident. They know what's going on. So we do have to use a little bit lighter line and whatever we got to do. Three or four minutes on a sinker rig bait. That's it. After that, that bait is tired. It doesn't look attractive. He doesn't look natural swimming away from predators. He's tired. He's on his side. He's barely kicking. So drop it. If it's 150 to 250 feet down, drop it to 180. Pause it 30 seconds. Drop again 30 seconds. Pause 30 seconds. Drop again 30 seconds. Pause 30 seconds. Wind it up. The whole time you're going to be shuffling towards the bow. 30 guys guessing 10, 12 guys get in the water right away. And then everybody else kind of comes in, maybe a minute behind, whatever, you know, guys are coming out of the bunks, coming out of the galley, out of the head. Well, by the time the last guy gets in the water, the first guy that dropped in should pretty much be winding in. We should never have 30 guys on the rail. We had that today. It was not good. We could have hooked a lot more fish throughout the day, if we had worked it, they had worked at it. If your bait doesn't look good, well, if your bait doesn't look good in the hand well, it's not gonna look good in the water. Please, please, please take our monofilament. Please take our advice. My business is based on the fact that you guys get fish. So it, it's fully behoove me to give you guys the advice, the information, the experience work our butts off to give you every opportunity but you got to do what you got to do to get the bite so if everybody does that awesome now drags 60 pound test is a strong line against a 200 pound fish it's not very strong set your drag accordingly there's a reason there's a strike and then 15 drag settings above it that fish is supposed to take line there's a big load on the line, on the knots. Everything's being tested in that first 10 seconds. If your drag's too tight, you will break it. And that was the one opportunity, potentially, for you to catch a jumbo. Set the drag so the fish can take some line. When he stops, check it. You can adjust when it stops. You cannot adjust your drag when the fish is swimming because you have no idea how much drag you're actually giving it. You just know you went up one click. But if there's line coming off the whole time, you go up one click, line still keeps coming off. You don't really know how much pressure you really had. Wait for the fish to stop, check it, adjust if needed. Since these are very big fish, and most people have not caught one of these, please let the crew set your drag. Nothing's gonna hurt until the fish is on the line. If you get one on the line, why are you complaining? Why are you worried about the drag being too loose or not tight enough for you? You did what you're supposed to do. You got a fish on the line and it's still there. We can always bring it up. But if it's too tight right off the bat, zing pow, he gone. Talk to each other, communicate under, over. If you see your line crossing someone else's, go under them, go over them. If you hear hot rail. <laughs> the guy's got a fish, he's got to make moves. You take a step back from the rail and lift the rod. If you get in the tangle, ask for help. We're going to be monitoring you guys at all times, trying to get on top of it before it even happens. When it does happen, take a breath. Even if you have a fish that's in the tangle, the best thing you can do is take a breath, back your drag down two clicks. Not as much pressure, not as much tension gives us a second to be able to get that untangled and you just bring your drag right back up. There are situations where I will literally dump it into place 
with my thumb on, just letting line out fast, just so we can get the tangle. If there's two fish wrapped, we don't want that tension. Back the drag down, take a breath, and let us take care of it for you guys. If one of the crew asks for your rod when you have a fish on it, trust in the fact we're here to help. We don't want to catch a fish. We don't want to. But we see it from an outside perspective. Guys get blinders on and they get drones up and they don't see what's coming from the sides. We're standing here, I can watch that fish and that fish coming together. I may hop down, let me see your rod, and then just run, clear it, where you at, there you go. Everyone's gonna be on the same side of the boat, on every sport boat, the boat's gonna drift with the swell, the bait is gonna go with the current. Complete opposite, 99% of the time. Start on the wrong side of the boat, the second you drop it in, your line's already going under the boat, and the boat's already drifting over the top. There's zero point. You want to get your bait away from the boat, down where the fish are, and keep working the water column. I'll be up top, I'll be you know, checking in to see what depth they're at. If I say hint, 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 pay attention to the next six words or something. I'm probably going to say, we have a new school coming through. It might be a great time to change your bait. The big misconception is that you have to have a bait in the water to hook fish. It's not true. You have to have a good bait in front of the fish. And if your fish, if your bait has been out there for five, six minutes, and I say, the school's coming through right now, it bumps your chances up to wind it in, pin on a new bait, and lower it back down. Then just hope and pray that the bait that was tired three minutes ago is now going to just get some energy. So, talk to each other, three, four, five minutes max. I mean, I'm talking three or four minutes, which should be your sinker rate. At night, if you want, come on up. If we hook a fish, we're gonna sound off into the bunks. That's gonna be your alarm. If you wanna get up and fish in the dark, come on up. If you don't, there's plenty of time during the day, and there's inviting during the day. We were, a little further south than we were yesterday morning and we saw a lot of fish that didn't really want to cooperate we moved up and moved up and moved up in the last second we were pretty much out of time and we slid our school and it fit and that's why we were late i try to give everybody every opportunity within reason we're not short you guys at all it was all nighttime fishing it's one thing this stuff bites all the way through. If we have the opportunity to catch it tomorrow, get in a little late, so be it. If we're having a tough day, stretch it out like always. Fish hard when the boat stops. Plenty of time to rest and relax when the boat's moving. The guys that are working at it will be more successful. The guys that are hoping for a fight, we're going to be hoping all day long. Work at it. I highly, highly, highly suggest taking me up on my offer to put on 60 pound test on your heaviest rig. Even if you just spent 20, 30 bucks on 100 pound auto. You just spent 300 on the ticket. You want to catch the fish. Take me up on the free line. Pretty sure everybody on the boat knows what's been coming over the rail, right? And nobody's surprised by the fact that I'm saying these big ones are what's going on. Sure. Okay. If this is a surprise, or this conversation is leading a few of you to go, I only have a 50 pound setup, but in reality it's a 30 pound setup with 50 pound line on it. We do have rentals on board, the Kyra 20s, Phoenix 60 to 130 rods, loaded with 130 brake. So, if you need them, we do have some available, talk to the guy. The sun comes up right about 5, 5.15. You guys that are trying to get a full night's sleep, that's what time you're going to want to be up. If the boat's moving, clearly we don't have any fish hooked up. If the boat's drifting more than 10 minutes, 15 minutes, odds are we do. I'm not going to burn all day long hoping for that school to bite because we only have X amount of time. Daylight seven, maybe eight hours if we're at 55 miles. Our last school that bit good today was at 37. 
we could stay a little bit longer. But there's a gnarly downhill push. We made great speed on the way down. But kicked up all the way, we're only making nine knots on. Where we should be making 11, 11 and a half. So, we don't get as much time. Here, out your base. Sinker rigs are three or four minutes, that's it. Make sure you got a good, good bait. Just like, that's why Nate's right next to you. Just help you out. Nope, nope, nope. Keep your feet in the same spot. 
don't, don't, don't do anything. Just go up. Point your rod tip to the bow. Keep your feet in the same spot. There you go, sir. Come on up. Come on up. Let me see your, your rod tip. Chris, back away. Getting in the way right now. There you go. You got it? down. Okay, go ahead. What knot you do at the connection? I just do a uni to uni. Yeah. Because it's big, but it seems like it always holds for me. Over. I understand that. Over. <laughs> you really have to have that chum power, right? Taking the advice of dropping down the line class on your heavy gear because we've got the right tackle attached to these fish for 50 pound line. So if you not take my advice, they're holding something that is either way too heavy to get a bite or your gear is way too loose to be fighting 200 pound fish. Now's the time to adjust it. They're coming. Concentrate your effort right in that zone. Three drops or so. And then wind it to the top. Oh, wait, wait. Check your drag right now. Make sure that line comes off the reel. And then go all the way and uh, strike. Put it all the way up to strike, right? Yeah, put it up to strike. And then, yeah, fight it from there. Yeah. Thank you.
bring them in, you're already wrapped up together. The three wines, knobs, hump that fish. Just turn the handle. Tip straight up. The highest I can go. Go down the mark. Now you're too high. There you go. Front tip up. Come right under you. Not so high. <laughs> wow! What a fish!
floating under the boat. Stop fishing the wrong side of the boat, guys. If you drop in and your line's under the boat immediately, it's going to be there for the whole time. You're going to get tangled. You're not going to hook any fish. And if you do, it's going to rub the cross and break off. Left hand side of the boat. Do the left hand side. Get around that bow. Or I'll switch, I'll, sw I'll put a... Yeah, uh, put the real on something else. Yeah, exactly. That's what I try to tell all these guys, and a lot of them don't want to listen because they have six or seven rods. I'm like, I have grab your speed. best reel, your best rod, you got one overnight trip, yeah. it's a one size type. You have the gaff standing there ready, oh, ready to go. You looked at me kind of like, you didn't like that I was talking so loud. Uh, I don't like when people, I know, I'm just talking. Do I come to you your and tell you how to do your job? Is that cut it out there or his? That's right there. For those of you dropping in lines near or around the fish, wind up, please. Abraham. I'm going to stand by. I don't know if that other guy had a fish. He didn't even have a Is this tail wrap? Yeah. I'm, no, no. Tail wrap. I saw it. Uh, we had two fish at once. I think it was the other guy's fish. Nate, stay right there. Nate, Maybe. Yep.
doing 60 pound floral? Yeah. Come through, come through. On the Pan International? Yeah, the 12, the smallest one? Yeah. I have the 16 and the 20, but I got them set up as a flat ball. I didn't even have time to retie, so I just grabbed this. So I don't Great fish. <laughs> Great job. Get pliers? I do have a lot of guys that like fishing the boat. 